everyone, welcome back. Well, we had a few days of really hot weather here, so the snow melted and things just started growing. And I noticed that I have a big bold patch in my backyard. This is where the feeders were hanging all winter long. I use black oil sunflower seeds all winter long, so they just drop on the ground. I clean up, but there's always something that's left over. So to deal with all that mess, and you know, birds drop bird seed on a regular basis anyway, I just take my bird feeding station and I move it to a different spot. And then whatever I can't really pick up, I just rake it out and I give my lawn a chance to recover. And this is something I do all summer long. I just take my bird feeding station, move it to one spot and to another spot. Uh, and that gives my lawn a chance to stay green and nice all summer long. And then Susan Rogg here in Florida is an avid gardener. She feeds her birds hull sunflower seeds, but with the humidity in Florida, she's noticing that hull sunflower seeds do clog her bird feeders and spoil really fast. So she decided to give a black oil sunflower seeds another try. She filled her squirrel buster plus with the black oil sunflower seeds and put a tray under it and she was surprised how much she was actually catching and her lawn is still nice and clean and of course the ground feeding birds were coming to the tray and even squirrels were helping themselves to whatever birds were dropping. So if you have a squirrel buster plus and you don't want to have all that mess on the ground and you want to continue feeding black oil sunflower seeds please consider installing a seed buster tray if you don't have the plus model, you can actually install the tray on its own on the pole right under the suspended feeder. Just make sure to observe the 18 inch clearance between our feeders and the seed tray. How songbirds decide upon the size of their nest may well be a bit of a mystery to ornithologists. That is a great question, Chris, and there's no simple answer either. But here are my thoughts based on my 40 years of studying captive kestrels. A given female songbird, including hummers, cannot necessarily control the number of eggs they might lay for their clutch. However, a whole slew of factors, both genetic and environmental, play a role in clutch size determination in birds. Generally, there's a predetermined n number of eggs that a given songbird species might lay. But it's not always exact. For example, Kestrels in general lay five eggs, but some females only produce four, while the odd one lays six, and very rarely, seven. Now we both know that kestrels lay their eggs in cavities or holes. Almost all of the time they choose a cavity large enough to accommodate five nestlings of whatever size. But one scientific paper described a pair who laid their five eggs in a small cavity. Close to fledging time, the four or five young had to stand on one another because there was not enough floor space. Miraculously, they all fledged regardless. Now to your specific question about hummers. When they are building their tiny nests, the females cannot predict how many eggs they will lay, but as I said earlier, genetics determines both the average clutch size and also the average nest cup size for a given species of hummingbird. If the number of eggs laid is less than average, it's not a problem. But if the female hatches out an extra young or two in a banner year of food availability, it could pose a problem. If there's not enough room in the nest, then likely the smallest nestlings won't survive to fledge in any case because they won't be able to compete with their larger nestmates. So the short answer is, the female cannot really predict how many eggs she'll lay, and she's also not able to adjust her nest cup size to a larger clutch. Last episode, I talked about using cooked eggshells to serve to your birds as extra calcium and grit. This episode, I wanna talk about using raw eggshells. Gardening season has already started. We have radishes and lettuce growing in our greenhouse, and we're prepping all the other beds for other plants later on. And we're always looking for, you know, natural things to fertilize our garden. Anything in the household is always a welcome. So that's where raw eggshells come in handy because they they make an excellent fertilizer, especially for your fruit bearing plants like tomatoes. Eggshells keep the acidity down and they provide calcium for your plants as well. Just make sure not to use it with uh, plants that love acidity like cabbage and spinach. So here's how you can make eggshell fertilizer. Use raw eggshells, wash them and dry them, and then grind them to a fine powder and mix that powder with soil either outside or even in your uh, um, indoor plants. 
if you can't grind them, you can still use raw eggshells, then boil water and pour that boiling water onto your eggshells. Let that uh, mixture sit until the water turns room temperature. Drain the water. This uh, water is actually called eggshell tea and then nourish your plants with that tea. Most baby boomers are familiar with the expressions dead as a dodo or as dumb as a dodo. More important, we're certainly aware that the dodo no longer exists on our planet. Once native to the island of Mauritius, we lost the dodo in the mid to late 17th century thanks to humans arriving on the island. Standing about a meter tall and weighing around 15 to 20 kilograms, the ungainly flightless dodos were not afraid of humans, often walking right up to them and getting clubbed to death for their trouble. They only produced one egg per year, which often fell prey to rats and monkeys introduced to the island. It didn't take long for the dodo to become extinct. Now, a company called Colossal Biosciences has announced that it wants to de-extinct the bird. In other words, bring it back to life Jurassic Park style. The company, which was started in 2021, had already stated that it's going to recreate the mammoth and a year later added the thylacine or Tasmanian tiger to its list. Well, one member of the team at the University of California, Santa Cruz, has completed the necessary first step by reconstructing the dodo's entire genome, and moreover, has determined that the Nicobar pigeon is the closest relative, recreating the dodo will be no easy feat. You see, one can't clone birds like one can do with mammals. With mammals, it's possible to implant genomic material into an egg, such as was done with Dolly the sheep. But with birds, there's an added problem the embryo develops inside a shell. There's no easy access. And even if that was successful, the embryo has to develop correctly and hatch out successfully. And next, suitable surrogate parents would have to be needed to nurture the creature. A nutritious diet would have to be provided. And finally, the bird would have to be raised in an appropriate environment. So the team is exploring a process to extract avian primordial germ cells from bird's eggs. If successful, it would be applied to Nicobar pigeons to create a dodo-like bird. But some serious questions arise. Should we expend millions of dollars to hopefully bring back one species when 12% of the world's 11,000 bird species are in critical danger of extinction? And even more important, achieving this goal might send a wrong message. Why bother to save habitat for an endangered species if we can just reproduce it in the lab and put it on display? Did you know that barn swallows are the same all over the world? I personally cannot imagine my summers without these birds. This is one of the few examples when human activities had actually had a positive impact on bird populations. Barn swallows have happily adapted to using human infrastructure to build their nests and as a result are now one of the most widespread bird species in the world. Just a quick reminder, if you have barn swallows building nests on your buildings, you cannot really touch the nests because these birds are protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. And besides, having barn swallows on your property is believed to bring fortune. Have you ever heard the legend of how barn swallows got their forked tails? Well, at some point they decided that humans needed fire, so they stole it from the gods, which of course infuriated them, and the gods threw a burning amber at barn swallows, which burns the inside of their tails. Well, playing with fire is sure dangerous, folks. Paul, the inventor of Squirrel Buster Bird Feeders, lives on the farm and every summer I see barn swallows there. Paul actually has the most perfect nesting place for bluebirds, tree swallows and barn swallows. So earlier today we went to the farm in the hopes to see the first scouts there, but I guess it's still too early and it was really cold. We did go into the barn, he has a very old barn there, and we found seven barn swallow nests. It was so exciting to see the construction and check them out you know without disturbing the birds barn swallows return to the same breeding grounds year after year and they actually reuse old nests they just do a bit of cleanup they take the old feathers out and then they bring new clean mud uh, for the next generation 
they have two broods uh, per season so we have ample time to go back and check out how many of those nests are going to be occupied and i'm actually curious whether they will build even more nests in that barn and just like all other little birds they have about four to five eggs per clutch Males and females look similar. Males have just slightly longer tail feathers. And I remember seeing tree swallows and barn swallows at the same time at that farm, and I wasn't sure which one was what, so now I know. Tree swallows have white bellies and white throats, and barn swallows have this bronze brownish throat and bellies. Their diet is mostly flying insects. Uh, barn swallows also help themselves to all the eggshells that humans provide, you know, as uh, extra calcium or grit and when the weather is really bad and they can't fly they don't mind eating barn flies and dead insects and even stationary insects on plants so as you can see they're great as pest control all right everyone time to say goodbye our photo contest is still open it's pretty woman and enjoy all the migratory birds and gardening take care everyone i'll catch you in two weeks